everybody, Miss Lottie Daw here, and of course, my me, who's kind of busy at the moment. Uh, this evening's film noir is going to be The Blue Gardenia. Now, I had never heard of this film before, and I found it on Tubi, and I was amazed at how wonderful this film was. I love this film. So let's talk about it. It came out in 1953. It's directed by Fritz Lang, and it stars Anne Baxter, Raymond Burr, Nat King Cole, and George Reeves, just to name a few. Now, I do have to mention that Nat King Cole only has a cameo in this film, but seeing him in this film and hearing his voice in this film was just soothing and I loved it. It made me smile so much. I love that man. So let's talk about uh, some interesting notes about this film. It's based on a novella written by Vera Casperi entitled The Gardenia. A novella is a fiction story that is longer than a short story but shorter than a novel. It first appeared in February, March issue of Today's Woman magazine. The name of the film was changed to The Blue Gardenia to remind people of the Black Dahlia case murder that had happened back in 1947. My favorite quote from the movie, and I love this, uh, it comes from Harry Pebble, who is Raymond Burr, and he says, quote, How about you slip into something more comfortable? like a few drinks and some Chinese food, unquote. Woo! Love it, right? Okay, so let's talk about what this movie is about. And I gotta say, I am a big fan of Raymond Burr. I love his voice. I love the way he looks. I loved him on Perry Mason and Ironside. Oh, that man. Okay, anyway, let's get to what the Blue Gardenia is about. Back to, back to, back to the, the Blue Gardenia. Uh, Noah Larkin, Nora, sorry about that, Larkin, uh, which is Ann Baxter, is a single woman who works as an L.A. switchboard operator, along with her roommates, Crystal Carpenter, who is Ann Southern, and Sally Ellis, who is hilarious in this film. I love her roommates. On her birthday that night, uh, she decides to celebrate by dining alone at home with the picture of her fiance, a soldier serving in the Korean War. At the candlelight dinner, she opens the latest letter from him only to receive a Dear Jane letter, revealing his plans to marry a nurse he met while stationed in Tokyo. Devastated, Nora accepts a date over the telephone with Harry Preble, Raymond Burr, a womanizing calendar girl artist who had been sizing up prospects earlier that day at the telephone office. When she arrives at the Blue Gardenia, a South Seas themed restaurant, Harry is surprised to see Nora rather than Crystal. Now I need to explain that when he called the house, Nora pretended to be Crystal. So he was expecting Crystal, her roommate, to show up, not her, because he knew she already had a man. Um, I need to find where I was. Okay, immediately, <laughs> sorry about that. Immediately, he plies her with strong tropical cocktails, one after the next, until she is completely and happily soused. In other words... He got her drunk. Pianist Nat King Cole croons in the background, highlighting his popular song, Blue Gardenia. It's so beautiful. I loved it. And I got to say, I loved the whole scene right now of the two of them. They're eating Chinese food. They're having the cocktail drinks. Nat King Cole is singing in the background. I'm like, oh my God. God, like I would have died and gone to heaven. Like how romantic is that? It, it's a beautiful scene. I loved it. Uh, Harry whisks Nora to his apartment to show her his art and plays the same Cole record on his phonograph. He puts on all the moves, but Nora passes out on his couch. Persisting, he awakens her and attempts an implied date rape. 
She resists, then strikes him with a fire poker, shattering a mirror. Semi-conscious, Nora flees the scene, leaving her black suede pumps behind. The next morning, Nora is awakened by Crystal and discovers she has a complete blackout of what happened the previous night. Meanwhile, police at the crime scene question Harry's maid, who was played by Almira Sessions, who admits to cleaning the poker and placing the shoes in the closet, ruining the crime scene. Police arrive at the telephone office to question women who had posed for Harry's girly drawings. When Nora learns why, she is startled and immediately seeks the nearest newspaper account of the slaying. It re revives a vague flashback of wielding a fire poker and shattering a mirror. Evoking the macabre specter of the Black Dahlia slaying, popular Los Angeles Chronicle columnist Casey Mayo, Richard Conte, dubs the presumed killer the Blue Gardenia Murderess. He learns from the restaurant waiter that the mysterious woman was a blonde and from its blind female flower seller, Celia Lovsky, that she had a quiet voice. That night, Sally reads aloud the newspaper report to the suspect that the suspect, sorry about that, can't read my own writing, has been wearing a black taffeta dress. Frightened, Nora wraps hers in a newspaper and sneaks out in the wee hours to burn it in an outdoor incinerator. She is scared by a passing patrolman for burning after hours, but let off with a warning. So, in other words, she, um, she wore the black taffeta dress and the black pumps. She wanted to get rid of the evidence, so she wrapped it in a bag and threw it in an incinerator. Cop comes by, it's illegal that time of night to be burning in the incinerator, and he just lets her off with a warning because he obviously scared the crap out of her, but he's also very suspicious as to why is she out in the wee hours of the morning burning trash in the incinerator. But he lets her off with a warning. Yeah. Would that happen in today's world? Mm-hmm. Not gonna go there. Seeking to capitalize on the case's publicity, Casey writes a column entitled Letter to an Unknown Murderess, calling for her to turn herself in to him rather than the police, promising fairer treatment. He receives many bogus phone calls from local women, but recognizes Nora's as genuine. After one botched attempt, he does meet her in his office. She tells him that she is speaking for a friend, and Casey reveals that he is willing to pay for top legal representation if that friend agrees to surrender. The two later go to a diner. The next day, Nora agrees and returns home, where she confesses to world worldwide roommate Crystal, who is sympathetic. The next day at the diner, Crystal meets Casey and points him to Nora's booth where she finally drops the bomb. He feels shocked because he had begun to fall in love with her. Are you surprised? It is a film noir. He also feels guilty, admitting to her that he was only pretending sympathy for the alleged killer when he thought it was someone else. Shortly afterward, the police arrive on a tip from the counterman and arrest Nora. Bitter and confused, she leaves convinced Casey had double-crossed her. Leaving town, Casey notices that the music at the airport, the love theme from Tristan and Isolod, whatever that is, uh, is the same composition the maid found playing on Harry's phonograph. Red flag, different song. Instantly grasping that the records on the machine had been changed, Casey realizes it's possible that Nora was not the killer. Following up his hunch, Casey and police captain Haynes, George Reeves, go to a local music shop. The clerk tells them that it was Harry's ex-girlfriend Rose Miller, Ruth Story, who sold him the record and calls to her to come out front. Realizing the police are closing in, she locks herself in the restroom and attempts suicide. From her hospital bed, Rose confesses that she had arrived at Harry's apartment after Nora had passed out, distraught, 
and implying that she was pregnant, demanding that Harry marry her. He refused and instead started playing the record that, that he had bought from her earlier. She then noticed Nora's handkerchief on the floor by the record player and in a rage fueled equally by jealousy and anger, bludged in Harry with the poker. Cleared, Nora is freed. She confides to friends that she has forgiven Casey and wants him badly. Casey wants her as well. And learning she's interested, tosses his little black book to his buddy Al. What a cute ending. I love it. It has a good ending. I really like that. Except for the fact that Harry gets killed because it's Raymond Burr. Anyway, so let's talk about my review of this film. Uh, I love the bits of comedy sprinkled throughout the movie. It's really hard to believe this movie is a film noir at first. It doesn't have the usual theme of noir at all. I love Raymond Burr in this film. He's gritty and cocky and a total womanizer, completely different from Perry Mason. <laughs> complete opposites. Um, of course, I love Nat King Cole, as I said. Um, acting is great by everybody in this film, but Anne Baxter is phenomenal in this film. I loved her in this film. This movie kept me intrigued the entire time. Not once was it slow or boring. Major plot twist, as I told you, a uh, total shocker, um, and I loved the ending of this film. Like I said, I highly recommend this film. Um, you can find it right now on Tubi under the film noir category. Um, Tubi is a um, an app on Roku television. So if you have a Roku television, um, go into your... Um, your apps and you can download Tubi, T-U-B-I, and go under the category for film noir and there is a whole huge collection of those movies and Blue Gardenia is there. Um, it was on Turner Classic Movies app a while back. I'm not sure if it's still there or not. So you can try it on Turner as well. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this. I love this movie so much. I wish I would have found it sooner, but I'm glad that I found it when I did. It's, it's, it's a gem. It really is. So if you love film noir, definitely give it a, a try. Um, also, like I said, with Raymond Burr, I love Raymond Burr. And to see him play this type of character totally took me off guard. I was not expecting him to play this type of character at all. So that made the movie even more intriguing to me. All right, that's going to do it for today's Friday Night Film Noir. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you liked this video and you want to see more, please like and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly Greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. This is Miss Lady Doll saying ta-ta for now.